Hi PlusTube, I'm Annie and I am the Proper Stitcher and welcome to episode number 55. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a channel where I like to talk about cross stitch and some quilting and hopefully give you inspiration to fully finish your projects. And if you're returning, thank you so much for stopping by again and for coming to me week after week. I am coming to you all today on a Friday. I usually film on a Thursday and upload my videos on Thursday nights, but the last two weeks I have had some things come up and it's delayed me recording my videos. Someone asked me last week if Fridays will be my new day for recording and the answer is no. I do plan on continuing with my Thursday videos but the last two weeks have just been a little different. And so hopefully we can get back on track soon and I'll come back to you on Thursdays. So this week I wanna talk about just a little bit of life updates, go over some finishing that I did this week, uh, share with you my whips and my haul, talk to you about StitchCon. I will be out of town next week for StitchCon and then go into our giveaways. So let's just jump right into this week's video. Grab um, a pen and some paper and your cross stitching and something to drink and let's get comfortable. Um, Gray and Tristan both have been busy this past week. Tristan's been away at Young Life Camp and we pick him up tomorrow at five. So I'm anxious to hear how his week has been. Hopefully he has had a good time. It's certainly been different for us not having him at home. Um, and Gray started her training as a camp counselor this week, so she is busy during the day. Um, so we are just adjusting to our new schedule for the summer, and hopefully we'll get into the swing of our new normal um, for the next few months. So this has been an interesting week. I did write a blog post and put, posted it on Tuesday. You can find my blog at The Proper Stitcher. Dot com. I will link it below and in that blog post I discuss losing your stitching mojo and hopefully giving you some inspiration and ideas on how to find it again or regain it or just self-care tips on how to help you rediscover your passion of whatever your hobby or anything may be that you have um, lost interest in temporarily. So hopefully you'll uh, take some time, go over and check it out. Leave me a comment. Let me know you've been by and um, let me know what you think. So this week I had a finish. I have been stitching Seaside Sparrow by Artful Offerings. And this was what I have been stitching uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I have nicknamed him, um, well, my friend Amy nicknamed him Pierre. So I fully finished Pierre this week. And I debated whether or not to share this finish with you because quite honestly, I made a lot of mistakes. And I am the type of person that will say, I'm not a perfectionist and I would rather have a finished project than a perfect project, right? I've said that all along that I like to take the fear of things being perfect and things being um, just take that fear out of finishing. Just don't worry about the imperfections that are going to occur. But this is one of those finishes where I just kept making mistakes. I kept trying to correct them and the more I tried to correct my mistakes, the worse I made it. So I pushed through. He is not perfect. I am not 100% happy with him, but that is okay. Um, I still think he's cute. I still think it's a fun project. I still think that the, the, the pattern is fun to stitch, but I wanted to um, just share him with you. I ultimately decided to share him with you because it will happen. It will happen to you. It happens to all of us that you just keep messing something up and you just don't know what to do with it. And so let me show you Pierre and then I will tell you what I did that I was not happy with and then hopefully how I corrected it to still feel happy enough displaying him on my on my shelf. So here is Pierre and from a distance, he looks cute. He looks great, right? So as we get closer, let me tell you about Pierre. So I finished him on a Stitch Etc. board and Kim Gavlick sent me some boards this week. So this is one of her boards. I will link her Facebook page below and her email. That's how you order from her. So he is mounted on one of her boards. 
and I double layered him with Priscilla's um, fabric from Stitching with the Housewives, and I will link that below too. These are Chelsea's Checks, and this is her new stripe fabric. I can't remember the name of the stripe fabric, but I'll link it below. And I decided to go with the red because I wanted red, white, and blue, and I figured since the paddle, the board was blue, I wanted everything else to be red because he has a lot of blue on him. Well, what happened was, um, well, let me back up. So I layered a couple of pieces of sticky board. I measured them. I did my usual um, quilting batting and put those pieces on the sticky board. And then I did my stitch piece. And I measured the sticky board to fit the stitched piece. And I ironed interfacing on the back of him. And then I went about my usual process of mounting him to the board, which involves interfacing on the back and then I cut a piece of quilters quilting batting to go so on the sticky board so he's a little bit more puffy. And then I put him on the sticky board. Well anytime you have a stitched border like this, it's very difficult to get that border straight. And the more I tried to straighten it, the more crooked it got. So I got it as straight as I could and then, um, and I was happy with it at that point. And then I did the corners on the back. I glued the corners and then got it all glued. And then I turned it around and the everything was wonky. Um, everything that I had once had straight, all the corners that I once had straight had shifted in that process. So I took it apart and I was trying to correct it. I had to do that three times. I took it apart three times. And the more I took it apart, the um the messier it got on the back and the uh, the thicker it got on the back because everything was drying on the back faster than i could work with it so the corners are not um pretty and it got very bulky at behind the sticky board that is why i put these buttons here hoping that it would cover up some of those mistakes on the corners but you can still see how this is a wavy line. But the more I kept taking that sticky board off, the more I was concerned that I was going to um, ruin the stitched piece. So I did. I I felt like after three times I was pushing my luck, trying to continue to correct it. So I had to go with how it how he was. And so I finished mounting him, and then I decided to add the buttons to cover up the corners so this is how he has turned out so he is he's wavy a little bit and then i made a burlap bow and then i have this other ribbon and i just double layered the ribbon and i stitched the um, star again and made a covered button using the same color um, floss of this star and then mounted it on the bow. So this is my Artful Offerings Pierre, and he is still cute to me. I still think he's adorable, and I think that even though I made several mistakes, um, I, it's not something that I would tell people that I made a lot of mistakes, but I wanted to share that with you because one, it's full transparency. I, I do want you to see that it is okay to continue with finishing something and and salvaging what you have. And there's always a way to make something better or to to go with um, to to go with those mistakes and try to make it a work. Um, but this is just part of it, and I am very happy that he is still finished and I still I love the colors I think the colors look really cute with him I like how the red and the blue pop um, these are Lori Holt buttons I will link those below as well I have a jar of these buttons and I was not planning on using those buttons in this but I just was trying to figure out a way to hide those corners because they they just started to shift a little bit too much so i felt like i needed something to hide them a little bit so this is artful offerings seaside sparrow aka pierre and i think he is very sweet and very cute and i love this board from stitch etc 
So I plan on putting him on my shelf um, or he may end up downstairs um, in the family room. I'm not sure yet, but I'm so happy with having him done and having him finished and having another patriotic piece to display. Um, so that is my one FFO this week. Um, and he's super, super cute. So let me show you my whips that I've been working on. I have not been working on a lot of different whips, but I did make some good progress on some of my whips. So I showed y'all last week, Summer in the Round. I have not fully finished it yet. Um, this is a JBW design, Summer in the Round, and I got a wooden paddle from Stitch Etc. that I'll show you in my haul that I plan on finishing this on. I've never finished anything round before, um, and so I didn't want to go ahead and finish it this time, especially after the trouble I had with Pierre, because I wanted to take, I want to take my time to really work on this. I'm going to have to practice on a scrap piece of fabric and see if I can finish it in a round shape. But the reason I'm showing you that, even though I showed it to you last week, is because it is on the same fabric of an elegant alphabet, which is a JBW design as well. And I made a little bit of progress on this. And what I'm going to do is cut this off and I will have enough fabric here to stitch another round and I'm going to stitch um, Christmas in the round on this side. So here is my progress on an elegant alphabet. When I saw you last week, I had this stitched and the letter B. So I stitched the A and the C and the bird and the envelope and I started on the, um, this little, little piece down here. So this is where I am on the pattern. And here is a bigger image. And this is one of our giveaways today. Judy sent me some patterns to share with you all. And this is, this is one of them. So I am stitching this on 32 count um, antique white linen. And I am using Aztec Red by Weeks Dye Works. I wanted to pick a pinkish red, and I think this is a good choice, especially on this white fabric. It looks really pretty. Um, I am stitching one, excuse me, two strands of floss over two threads. So this gives it a nice, a nice solid color. And this is a really fun piece. I'm, I'm enjoying the monochromatic. I am enjoying the, um, just the motifs and how um, simple they are. They are just a beautiful, beautiful design. But let me show you. I really, really like all the birds in this piece. So this has been fun to stitch and this one will be framed. I will, I don't know if I will frame it myself or if I will have it professionally framed, but it will definitely be framed. Another piece that I showed y'all last week that I was able to make some progress on is Barbara Anna's Dreaming Frida. Dreaming Frida is something I've had um, since last summer. And these are all um, published by Creative Poppy and they are PDF downloads. So you can, um, it's an instant, instant download. So. A lot of, lot of um, designs on her website and Barbara Anna's website. So this is my progress. I am stitching this on 36 count vintage country mocha. Oh, I'm showing it to you upside down. <laughs> so like I mentioned last week, this is not a fast stitch. There are a lot of color changes. So it takes me a little bit longer to stitch this one but it is a lot of fun. All those colors are so cheerful. These are all DMC. And so I am, I finished the swirl of her ponytail, her hair, and I've stitched the houses and I'm right about here. So I'm kind of working the, I started in the middle and then I'm going to the end and then I'll come this way. But I am really enjoying this. I am stitching one strand of floss over two. 
and this has a lot of colors. These are all DMC, and I opted to put them in the floss bags, floss away bags, just because there were so many that I did not want to take the time to put them on floss drops. But these are all just beautiful colors. Lots of teal, yellow, red, um, salmon, pinks, just a lot of fun colors. So it makes it a lot of fun to stitch. Um, but as I mentioned, because of the color changes, it does take a little bit longer, um, but that's okay. It's, it's so much fun and it's so pretty to stitch. And then my third whip that I have been working on this week, I did not think I was going to start. I had no plans of um, starting this one this week, but it just, the colors kept calling my name. And I don't know why, but I just wanted to stitch it. So I started Be Kind, Be True by Hello from Liz Matthews. And I, I think it's the size of it. I liked that it was a smaller piece but it had so has so much fun movement to it. I can just see these the wind blowing these flowers, the way that they are, are swaying, so pretty. Um, so I decided to start it. And I am stitching this, let me see. I'm using all the DMC floss for this, and I am stitching it on 40 count toasted almond fabrics by Stephanie. And so here is my start. So I start at the top, the top rectangular piece, which is here for Be Kind, Be True. And then I started a little flower in the corner. And I am enjoying this. I love this shade of green. And here it is. It's not a very big piece, as you can see. And I'm not sure if I'm going to frame this or finish it into a pillow. I've been I'm wanting to experiment with um, beads as a trim, as finishing with a trim of beads. And I might do that on this one, either the this um, terracotta color or the green. I think it would be really pretty with some beads. I don't know yet, but this is fun. This is going to be a lot of fun to stitch. I just love all of Liz Matthews designs. So um, this one I did get at market and it it is just, it's, it's just so much fun to stitch. But I like that it has all the DMC colors. Um, so it is definitely something that um, I had all the colors in my stash. So it was definitely something I could start right away. Those are all my whips that I've been working on this week. Um, not a whole lot, but they've definitely kept me busy. Um, between that and finishing Pierre and um, organizing all of my other things that have come in. So let's show you the haul that I got this week. I, um, I mentioned that I'm going to StitchCon next week and I leave on Wednesday and StitchCon is an event that um, is hosted by Keepsakes which is a store outside of Cincinnati. And Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching, um, they're part of the StitchCon as well. So between Keepsakes and Pam and Steph and that the, the whole gang up in that area, they decided to have um, retreats. And this started about four or five years ago, I believe. This is the first time I'm going, but it started as an opportunity for floss tubers and viewers to, to connect. And a, a lot of people come who, they are floss tubers and a lot of people are not. So it's just a great way for us all to get together and stitch and to meet and get to know each other. But it sounds like a lot of fun. There are two weekends, weekend A and weekend B. I'm going weekend A and each weekend has 300 attendees. And between stitching and there is an annex where they have a just small shop set up or, or booth set up and they have shuttles to take you to and from keepsakes. Um, it just sounds like a lot of fun. Everything from exchanges to, um, oh, what is it? They, they call it a brag table or um, where you can put some, display something that you have finished or that you're working on for people to see. 
Um, it, it just sounds like a lot of fun. But one of the things is you can bring things to trade or to give away as gifts. And so I'm, I'm telling you all of this about StitchCon to let you know that I am making, I think I'm going to make some scissor fobs and I got some charms to make some scissor fobs. And here's, this bag is full of just sewing themed charms. So we have scissors, there are um, little sewing machines, and DMC bobbins, and we have buttons and measuring tapes, all kinds of different types of charms in this bag. So I am hoping that I can get some scissor fobs made to share with some people. And I have other little goodies that I'm taking to share, and I'm glad that these came in today so I can get started on my scissor fobs this weekend. So that came in today. I um, got a my monthly um, MPI silk floss from Fat Quarter Shop. This is salmon pink. So each month they have a different club of the month and you can join their Classic Color Works Club, their Week Style Work Club. This one is the MPI Silk Club and it's called Fine Floss and this is for May. And all of these are shades of pink. And I started this club hoping that I could build up my silk floss stash because I had not, I do not have a lot of shades and a lot of colors. So I thought this would be a fun way to build up my stash and have a good collection of MPI silks in my, my stash. So this one is salmon pink and each month you get five skeins of floss. Kim did send me two more uh, paddles for finishing. These are her round finishes. And I am, I don't know which one I'm going to use for my summer in the round. I'm thinking the blue, but I may decide to use red. Or I may save the red and use it for Christmas. So we'll see. But wish me luck. Like I said, I've never finished anything in the round before. And I'm a little intimidated by it. So fingers crossed that I can get it figured out. But I got these paddles from Stitch Etc. And Gray has asked me to make her a quilt for her dorm room. So she wants just like a throw throw quilt. And I've been waiting, we've been waiting for the, the fabric to come in. So she picked out some fabric from Fat Quarter Shop and it came in yesterday. So what we decided to do is we're going to do, or I'm going to make her um, a quilt as you go jelly roll quilt or throw blanket, but it, it'll probably be the size of a twin blanket. And she picked out this flower garden. It's a Riley Blake Designs Echo Park Paper Company, but here are the colors. And I'll go ahead and take it apart since we know we're keeping it. So I can go ahead and open it up. But these are just beautiful little feminine, whimsical, colors. Everything from pinks, pinks to yellow to greens here. So here's the one of the base colors and it has some gingham, just so many pretty colors. Blues, greens, yellows, pink, more pink, and just lots of beautiful beautiful patterns too. So what I'm going to do is, is I've made this quilt before. It's called a Quilt As You Go Jelly Roll, Roll Quilt. And I'll link below the Fat Quarter Shop tutorial. I like to use white um, Jelly Roll fabric with it as well. I feel like it helps the um, to fill in uh, and break up some of the pattern and the color, but it also helps the Jelly Roll go a little farther. It helps it stretch and make more squares. So I got a, a one roll of white. I got four rolls of the of the, the the jelly rolls because I'm also going to make her a pillow. So I got four rolls of that and then she picked out the backing and the binding fabric. So this will be the backing, this beautiful pink, and this will be her binding cute, cute, cute fabric. 
And I got the, I got some more of the batting squares. These are wonderful for making the quilt as you go quilt. So when I get back from StitchCon, this will be something that I will be working on um, and hopefully have it finished before she goes away to college, which I'm sure I can, I can do that. But that is my goal anyway. So I got those things from Fat Quarter Shop. I got fabric all over my table now. And then I found this antique vintage book. This is embroidery motifs from old Dutch samplers. This is from 1974. And this is a book that has all kinds of motifs and patterns from antique samplers from the Netherlands and from um, everything, it breaks it all down. I just, it just arrived today, but it tells you all about these different uh, motifs and samplers and um, illustrations found in Dutch samplers. And I'm so excited to read through it. This is Ships and Mermaids. So it is going to be a lot of fun to go through this book as well. That came in today and I got this sweet card from Deb Martin, Deborah Martin, she received a giveaway a few weeks ago and she sent me a thank you card. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And other than that, that's all of my haul that I got this week. Put that box down. And I forgot um, to show you one other thing. I showed y'all last week some antique sampler, an antique sampler that I got from an estate sale and they had some more left over and contacted me to see if I would be interested in anything that they had left over. Um, so I did get three more antique samplers I wanted to share with you. And some of these will be going to Kim um, Gablick. But this is one that I picked up today actually. And let me go in from it this way. And I really liked the shades of blue and red and green on this one. Um, this is from Francis Mary Moore. It does not have a date on it, but it, I'll have to look at it a little bit more closely and see if I can figure out any more about it. This one is very hard to read because the linen is not in the best of shape, but I will look at this one a little bit more as well and see if I can find a date on this one. But I just thought that this was so interesting how, how all the colors and all of those letters, the, the uppercase letters are in eyelet stitches. And I really liked this motif down here. But I'm gonna have these reframed, this one especially. I'm worried that it's not in uh, since it's in such um, disrepair, I'm worried that it's it's not safe in this frame. I want to make sure that it's in the proper frame for it. And then the last one is this one. Um, this is from Bradford, Massachusetts, and I don't see a date on it either, but I really think that this is going to be a fun stitch. And look at this little border right here. Can you see that? So pretty. That, um, it's more embroidery, those stitches. So pretty. So, so pretty. So those three came in, or I picked up today, and they're so, so, it's going to be so much fun to, to look into those a little bit more. Um, other than that, that is all of my haul for this week. I did want to say that, or let you know that I've decided that I'm going to go to the Quilter Station retweet, Retreat, and that is September, in September, September 8th, 9th, and 10th. Super excited about that because um, Alma from Blackbird Designs will be there, Kathy Barrett, Teresa Kogut, Chessie and me, and Liz Matthews. So I'm super excited. I've never been to Quilter Station before, so I've added that to my list of places that I'm going to go um, for the retreats this year. So looking forward to that. So other than that, let's just jump into our giveaways this week. Last week, I asked you all to share with me um, your favorite season to stitch. And I got a lot of great responses. 
Thank you so much for participating. So if you are interested in entering a giveaway, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe to my channel, and answer the question below with the number of item that you're interested in. So if you're interested in all of the items, just list one, two, three, four, five. Um, and if you're, um, and you and be 18 years or older, so that I can ask you for your address to send you the, the prize if you win. Um, and that is all you have to do to enter the giveaways. So here are the winners from last week. And I have everybody from the last two weeks, all of those packages are ready to go out tomorrow. So here they are. Here are the winners from last week. Number one was courtesy of JBW Designs. Thank you, Judy. This is Seaside Series. This goes to Kim Jewell, J-E-W-E-L-L. Number two was Summer in the Round. This goes to Pam Peterson, Pam Peterson. Number three is from the Fat Quarter Shop. This is a quilt pattern. This goes to Judy Stalsberg, S-T-A-L-S-B-E-R-G. Number four was Bent Creek Stitching Row. This goes to Sherry Wilson, S-H-E-R-E-E, -E -E, Sherry Wilson. Number five is a Blackbird Designs pattern. This goes to Kathy Fox, Kathy Fox. Number six is also from JBW Designs. This is French Country Flower Basket. This goes to Suzanne Hubert, Suzanne Hubert. Number seven is also from um, Fat Quarter Shop. This is the Cross Stitch Journal. This goes to Mary McClure, M-C-C-L-U-R-E, Mary McClure. And number eight is a Kathy Barrick design, Bobby. This goes to Dawn Bose-Neeler, B-O-S-E-N-E-I-L-E-R. So that's all of last week's winners. Email me, let me know what you won, and email me your address, and I'll get that out to you as soon as possible. All right, so this week, I would like you to answer the question, how often do you cross-stitch? Do you cross-stitch daily? Do you cross-stitch a couple of times a week? Um, do you have sort of a, a routine that you get into that works for you? So I'm always looking for other people's stitching routines and ideas on how to keep that momentum going. So how often do you cross stitch, whether it's a daily, weekly, what is your routine and how often do you stitch? So here are, the, here are the giveaways for this week. Number one is from Judy with JBW Designs, an elegant alphabet, number one. Number two from JBW Designs, Sweet Land of Liberty, Number three is Something Wicked from Lottie Da. Number three. Number four is from Bonnie Woomer of Nebby Needle, A, B, C. That's number, excuse me, that's number four. Number four, number four. So, number one, An Elegant Alphabet. Number two, Sweet Land of Liberty. Number three, something wicked. Number four, ABC. Number five, also from the Nebby Needle, is Christmas Patriot. Number six is My Big Toe Cross Stitch Designs. Number seven is from Fat Quarter Shop. This is a quilting item. This is um, Snail Trail Quilt Block Foundation Paper. This is for a 12 inch square and this is for a six inch square. So this is Snail Trail Quilt Block Foundation Paper. That's number seven. And number eight, Country Cottage Needleworks Christmas Cookies. Number eight. So that is all of this week's giveaway. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to spend the weekend getting ready for StitchCon and um, I do, I will come to you next week from Cincinnati. I will do a video there. 
Um, I may try to squeeze in a video before I go just to share with you what I'm taking um, with me. Um, but I'm not sure if I'll have time for that, but I definitely will try uh, because I'm, I'm trying to be very selective of what I take to work on at the retreat. I want to make sure it's something that I can see, that it's something that um, I'm really bad about when I go to a retreat. I always take more than I ever stitch on. Um, so I really don't want to load myself down with a lot of things that I know I'm not going to work on. So I'm going to be really selective with what I take up there. Um, and I am going to spend the weekend working on all of my little things I'm taking to use as giveaways um, at the retreat. So if I have anything left over, I will definitely share those with you um, in a giveaway in the future. So until I see y'all next time, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, get some great stitching time in, and thank you so much for stopping by today.